members, friends, and supporters of Trinity United Methodist Church. It is good to be with you on this Easter Sunday morning. Happy Easter. I know that we are in a time that is very different than with what we are accustomed to, but I think the more that we uh, practice social distancing, the sooner that we can be reunited with one another face to face. Welcome. Good morning. Won't you join me for a time of prayer? Gracious God, we give you thanks for your Holy Spirit, that Spirit that is with us all the days of our lives, that Spirit that has kept us and has walked with us, that Spirit that is present on this Sunday morning, moving and working and having its way. O oh, great God, open our hearts and minds to hear you speak afresh on this Sunday morning, that we might truly, truly experience your resurrection power in our hearts and in our lives. These blessings we claim in the name of your Son, Jesus, let the gathered church say, Amen. Amen. Good morning again, Trinity. Happy Easter one more time. Let us join together in the singing of Christ the Lord is risen today, verses 1, 2, 3, and 5.
the joys and concerns of this gathered space. Um, I would particularly like to lift up those who have lost loved ones and continue to uh, deal with that loss um, as we are social distancing. Um, that's especially hard. And I would lift up those who were already dealing with health challenges prior to uh, the corona pandemic. And so I would ask that you would keep um, Iva and Lois, continue to keep them in your prayers, as well as all of those who have been, I guess that's really all of us who have been affected by the coronavirus. Those who um, are ill, those who have lost loved ones to the virus, those who have, may have lost um, their means of uh, providing for their families and their loved ones, um, those who are just um, going a little bit stir-crazy and being um, shut in. Um, we know that God is with all of God's children in all of the ways that we need God to be with us. And so we take all of our joys and concerns to God's throne of grace and mercy. Let us pray. Gracious God, on this Easter Sunday, as we celebrate the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, as we celebrate God who is still with and among us moving and working, God who is still God and still on the throne, we come to your throne of grace and mercy asking that you be with all of us. seeking solutions uh, that would allow us to get back to something like normalcy. And so God, in this season when we have come together in unprecedented ways, we ask that you would bless us in our efforts, that you would bless us in our efforts to continue to socially distance from one another, that you would continue to bless our medical professionals with the fortitude to continue to do the work that you would bless those who are doing the research to find vaccines and provide um, what we need. We're asking that you would be with us who are just ordinary citizens. Um, we're struggling with this. We're struggling with the fact that almost a hundred thousand of our brothers and sisters on this planet have left us to be with you, to be certain, but who have left us. God, we ask that you would give us wise leaders, both secular and sacred, that you would give us everything that we need to discern your good and perfect will for our lives together and our lives individually. That once again we would be able to be reunited with one another face to face. And we would be able to give you the glory and the honor and the praise. And that we would be able to lift you up in sanctuaries because Easter is not canceled. Your son is still resurrected. You are still with us. And so we give you the praise and the glory and the honor. We lift you up and we tell of your wondrous deeds even in the midst thereof. We offer our prayers as well as our thanksgiving. In the name of your Son, Jesus, let the gathered church say, Amen. And this is that time in our service when we lift the Word of God for the people of God. Reading from John, the 20th chapter, early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone was removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. 
He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes, but Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' had body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it that you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned around toward him, cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, as with the news I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. You've heard the word of God for the people of God.
see and be with you again, and particularly on this Easter Sunday morning as we celebrate the resurrection of our risen Savior. Uh, let's really get to it um, this Sunday morning so that you can hurry off and get to brunch uh, with family and friends, even if you're getting to brunch virtually. Let the church say amen. So it turns out there's this philosopher by the name of Nietzsche writing in the late 1800s, and he tells a story of a madman running through a marketplace shouting, I seek God! I seek God! He arouses some amusement, but nobody really takes him seriously. After much laughter and frustration, the madman smashes his lantern on the ground and cries out, God is dead, and we have killed him, you and I. Now it's true, God was in Jesus Christ dead, and we did kill him. No, not the Jews, no, not the Roman soldiers, no, not even Pontius Pilate, but you and I. In humanity's insatiable desire for more, we killed God. But that was a brief moment in the record of human history, when the earth shook and the sun refused to shine. What's more, accurate to, what's more accurate to say is that God, in Jesus Christ, was dead and we did kill him. But this fellow Nietzsche was, wasn't thinking about the Good Friday death of God or even a literal death of the actual God. No, Nietzsche was talking theology. He was thinking about the ways that we think and, and, and talk and write about God. Nietzsche used the phrase, God is dead and we have killed him, to sum up the idea that we had figured out stuff. That traditional sources of authority could no longer be trusted that we could and would have to depend on ourselves and our own knowledge and ability to figure out how to chart a newer, more positive course for humanity. It's a new idea that's actually very old. You'll catch that when you get home. <laughs> there are two problems with this very old, new idea. The first is that knowledge is always, our knowledge is always partial and incomplete. The Bible puts it in this way, we see as in a mirror, dim, and know only in part. And the second problem is that there is no accounting whatsoever for human will. Let's take a look at this morning's scripture reading, reading from John, the 20th chapter, verses 1 through 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he didn't go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, mm. that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying. One at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, 
why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni. It means teacher. Jesus said to her, don't hold on to me because I haven't yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. So, the first thing that kind of grabs me about this morning's scripture reading is that there is a lot of running around. A lot of running around in circles. Uh, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb while it was still dark. And because the stone had been rolled away then, she ran to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved. And then the two disciples ran to the tomb. And then they run back to their homes. And then finally, Mary goes back to the place of the disciples. There's, a, there's a, an awful lot of running to and fro. I guess that's what we do when there are problems and we don't understand. We run around in circles like chickens with our heads cut off trying to figure out. Think coronavirus. The virus came from China. Oh, oh, no, it came from Europe. Don't wear masks. Oh, well, wear masks. There'll only be a few cases. No, maybe hundreds of thousands will die. No, tens of thousands will die. It's okay to go out and, and live your life. No, 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 shelter in place. This will go away soon. No, no, shelter in place at least until the end of March. Oh, no, 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 Shh. maybe the end of April. Maybe the end of May. We run around in circles like chickens with our heads cut off because we know only in part. And sometimes even when we see or feel or hear or touch or smell, we still don't recognize or understand. We still don't trust what we see and feel. The Bible tells us that the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, saw and believed, but they still did not understand. Simon Peter seemingly never saw or believed or understood, despite seeing the linen wrappings lying there. And the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but neatly rolled up in a place by itself. Too often we don't trust what's right in front of us. Social distancing works. Seniors and, and persons with compromised immune systems die from the coronavirus. But it's that second problem. What about the idea of the death of God and our ability to figure out stuff that's most troubling? Because there is no accounting for or figuring out human will or how we will behave in any given moment. I know sometimes I get fixated on stuff. But for the life of me, I still can't figure out what is the sense in hoarding toilet paper and bottled water. Diarrhea is not a symptom of the coronavirus. And there is no evidence, and never has been, that the water supply is, any, is in any way contaminated or in danger. Who goes to the beach when there is a worldwide pandemic? Even if you don't care about your own life, surely there is some regard for your loved ones. 
Through all, throughout all of human history, when we would go left, when we should go left, when everything, everything in us says go right. Even with our knowledge and ability, even with our knowledge and ability to figure stuff out to chart a newer, more positive course for humanity, our knowledge is always partial and incomplete. We see, as in a mirror, dimly, and know only in part, and there is no accounting for the human will. That guy Nietzsche, he went on to say that God is dead. God is dead, God remains dead, and we have killed him. But remember, Nietzsche was talking about the idea of God. This Easter Sunday morning, we're not talking about the idea of God, but the actual God. God in human form who loved us so much that he gave his life. God, who so loved the world. Jesus gave Mary Magdalene back her life. She was a devoted follower and financial supporter of his ministry. And yet, it wasn't her mind or even her senses that caused her to recognize Jesus. It wasn't the words, woman, why are you weeping? But Mary, that caused her to see him that caused her to see him, that caused her to recognize him, that caused her to see him face to face. It was God's intimate, loving acknowledgement of her that caused her to recognize and fully know Jesus, even as she was fully known. This Sunday morning, I've been riffing on a familiar passage throughout most of this morning's message. It's from 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. If you've spent any time in church or ever been to a wedding, you've probably heard it. It begins this way. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. On that fateful day, in that tomb, angels spoke. A gardener spoke. But when God in human form, Jesus spoke with love and compassion, Mary heard and understood. God's love is patient, kind, not to pour out the very essence of the Almighty, is not self-seeking, isn't easily angered, doesn't keep a record of wrongs, doesn't delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. God's love always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. For now, we see as in a mirror, dimly. But when we see face to face, fully, now we know in part. But then, then, we shall know fully, even as we are fully known. That fellow Nietzsche, I'm positive that he was a smart guy. And, and, and I'm confident that he figured out a lot of really important stuff. And I'm certain that the president is a very stable genius. And he's figured out some stuff. And Dr. Fauci and Dr. Bix and Governor Pritzker and my new favorite politician, Governor Cuomo, are all smart people and have figured out a lot of stuff as well. But I'm putting my life on God, who is more than an idea, who is not dead, who so loved the world, 
who knows every hair on my balding head, who forgives all my sins and never gives up on us. God is not dead. Easter is not canceled. And I invite you to join with me in the affirmation, I am redeemed. I am redeemed. I am redeemed. Let the church of Jesus Christ say, Amen. This is that time in our service when we invite each one worshiping as a part of our virtual community to give generously as you have been blessed. in the United Methodist Hymnal.
out to the one who is and was and forever shall be, the only God in Jesus Christ who is alive, who is in our midst, who is living and working. To God be all dominion, glory, honor, and power this day and forever. Let the gathered church say, Amen.